good evening good evening is it evening is it afternoon how is everybody doing today i hope all is well come on in the room let's talk for a little bit good evening i hope you had a good weekend let's talk let's talk let's just talk from the heart on today people the Lord is good. He is kind. Blessings, uh, blessings, Tracy. Let's talk. I got a couple of things that I want to talk about and share. Um, the Lord is so good, y'all. I promise you, He is so good, and He definitely um, desires to be sought after. He desires for us to seek after a thing. Um, and to seek knowledge and to seek the answers. He says, seek me while I can be found. Um, and those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, I want to live righteous. I want to live holy. He said, they shall be filled. And so uh, I'm sitting here in my car and um, there's a big, I'm sitting in a parking lot. And if my phone wasn't barely propped up, I would show y'all, but there's a really big flag and it's waving in the air, big American flag. And so when I look at the flag, you know, I think of the song that says, um, the land of the free and the home of the brave. And so as I look at it, it just reminds me that it's so many things that we are being offered that are a lie. Cause this ain't, this ain't no land of no free. Come on in the room. Um, and, and, it, and it's supposed to represent freedom, but it's so much slavery. And I'm not even talking about slaves and chains. I'm not talking about black and white. Um, it's just so much bondage. It's so much bondage. The government systems, uh, drugs, um, poverty mindsets. It's so much bondage. But when we see this flag, we're supposed to kneel. We're supposed to put our hand on our heart. We're supposed to quote these words that don't really have no weight behind them. And so it is, God, I love your word. Um, and so it is with the things of God. It's so many things things that the Lord is just unraveling in my mind um, that are being taught as tradition and they're being taught as the standard of God, but really it's the traditions of men. And when I put it up against this word, my God, come on, it doesn't make sense. God, I love your word. And so it begins to puzzle me. Because as I as I was puzzling as I was puzzled over these things, I began to just talk to the Lord. And I'm like, God, why is this bothering me so much? And the Holy Ghost helped me to understand because I pattern my life after this word. Because I've literally learned to live by the leading of the Holy Spirit and to learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. You still got to know the word of God. Um, and so I've learned to pattern because if I had a thought, I had to learn how to run it. I had to learn how to run it by the word. Let me make sure that that was God. Um, and, and the Holy Ghost is never going to say um, anything. The Holy Ghost is not going to say what the Bible don't say. Okay. It's either going to give you a scripture. It's either going to give you an illustration. It's either going to give you a story. It's either going to give you a scenario. But but it's, it's still going to be able, you're going to be able to find it somewhere in these 66 books. Okay. Um, and so... As I, I just been pondering some different things and I woke up on Sunday morning, and I opened my word and I just flipped it open and I came to um, Psalms 119 and the first place my eyes went to was Psalms 119 and 145 and it says, I pray with all my heart. Answer me, Lord. Because prayer is nothing but but it's, it's conversation. God, I love your word. Prayer is just conversation with your daddy, with your father. And so I'm talking to you with all my heart. I'm seeking you, God. And I'm, I'm waiting for an answer because I trust that you hear me when I speak. <coughs> I will obey your decrees. I cry out to you, rescue me, that I may obey your laws. 
God, if you if you show me and you tell me I'm going to do it, but I, I want to obey your law. I want to know what you desire. I want to know your will for my life. I want to know your will. I want to know. I want to follow your commands, your rules, your leading, your guiding. I'm, I desire something that I, I keep telling the Lord is I desire to be kept. You don't got to force me to be kept. You ain't got to beat me over the head. You ain't got to drag me. You ain't got to force me to read my word. None of those things. I want to. I'm waiting to hear God. And if you speak, I'm going to listen. Come on. And so verse 147 says, I rise early before the sun is up and I cry out and put and put my hope in your words. And I said, God, yes, that's me. My hope is tied up into this thing. God, I love your word on, on today. My hope is everything I believe. Come on. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. My faith is in this thing, God. And so I'm, I'm trusting because it's, it's like we're being force fed a lie. And I said, God, I don't know. My birthday's on the 12th. I don't know. And I said, God, I feel you breaking something in me. Because I've walked with the Lord a little bit now and, and I know what it feels like when I'm being broken hey, because it's uncomfortable. My, I'm being stretched. My God, come on. I'm being pressed. It's not making sense. It's not fitting uh, into the socket that they're telling me it's fitting into. And so I say, God, I, I feel you're breaking something. And the one thing that I told that I, that I come to realize is that he's breaking the, the lie off of me. I'm no longer going to agree with a lie. And what does that mean? God, I love your word. I'm tired of the lies and we're putting it on the word. We're sugarcoating it. Hey. God, I love your word. If you got a comment, put it up there. If I get time, I will, I will uh, address it. But but prayerfully, you're in the vein that we're talking about right now. Um, Sometimes I don't answer the comments because I want to stay focused because I'm going somewhere. Um, But it's like, God, we're being forced to believe a lie. Come on. And, and it's not adding up anymore and it's not making sense. And so I know that it's breaking something off of me. And I said, I'm no longer going to, if someone says, how is your day? And it's not a good day. I'm not going to tell you I'm having a good day if I'm not. And, um, I'm not going to lie and I'm not going to sugarcoat it because we cannot, we, we have too many people living a false lie. We have too many people living a fake life. Girl, how's your marriage? Oh, girl, it's good knowing you getting beat at home. I'm not going to lie no more. God, I love your word on today. Um, I'm not going to force myself to be in circles that don't want to be in a circle with me. God, I love your word. Um, Because Jesus did not have to force the disciples to walk with him. Come on. See, those that are supposed to be for you, they don't have you don't have to force them to be for you. Those that are with you, you don't have to force them to be with you. Those that are with you, God, I love your word on today. You don't have to force them to be in your presence and you don't have to tell them how to treat you. God, I love your word. Come on. See, we, we have to get to this place where we can really be honest and we can truly live the word. That is why the family of faith is so important. Because you, you're, you're born into a new family. I was reading in Ezra and then and and the Bible was talking about how we the, the there's a such thing as a holy race. I know we're talking about black and white and Indian and uh, all of these Latin and all these kinds of races. Um, but we have to understand that there's such thing as a holy race. Yeah. And those that are not holy, they don't like it. And that is OK. Hmm. God, I love your word on today. Um, it's okay. But those that are supposed to be for you, it's a certain texture. And I'm no longer willing to receive what I'm not giving. Thank you, Lord. Because Jesus walked with those who wanted to walk with him. I can't leave that part. That's why he said, who is my mother and who is my brother? Those that do the will. We have some that speak the will. They don't do the will. They don't, they don't do the will. They just speak the will. They talk real good. Come on. But they don't love right. They're not patient. 
They're not kind. My husband always brings up this scripture that says, if you want friends, you got to be friendly. Well, I'm saying this, I'm adding this to it. And it's not adding to the word. It's just expanding. Uh, if you want love, you got to be loving. God, I love your word on today. Um, if you, if you want friends, yes, you have to be friendly. Come on. Um, this is, it's so important because we're, we're, we're tainting the view of God. Let me keep reading because I want you to get it how the Lord gave it to me. 148. I stay awake through the night thinking about your promises because I really do. I said, golly, this is like amazing. Like David, you, you David, I, I was right there. with. It's like I was with him when he was writing these Psalms. I stay awake at night counting, going over and over in my mind. <laughs> But God, you said, love your neighbor and love your friend and love your, love your neighbor and love your enemy and love the Lord, your God. You said it, God. And, and you said, husbands, love your wife. And you said, wives, submit to your husband as unto the Lord. Uh, you, you said these things. You said, I should be the lender and not the borrower. My God, you said you've come to give us life and life more abundantly. My God, come on. So I'm based my life upon these scriptures and the reason that I'm able to stay in some situations, God, I love your word. It's because I hold on to his promises. But the Bible says hope deferred. It makes the heart sick. And so many people have become sick hearted and it's called, some people call it church hurt and that's a form of it. Uh, but so many people in there and we're being told, yeah, just stay at that church and keep being manipulated and keep being abused. Now I want to make this clear. Being, being led is not being controlled. Okay. That's being led in a group, but, 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 but a true leader lives the life they lead. Come on. They go first and then they tell you about it. Come on. They're never going to tell you to go do something that they're not doing first. That's not control. That's leading. God, I love your word. Um, in your faithful love, O oh Lord, hear my cry. Let me be re revived by following your regulations. This thing is real. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. There is a refreshing in the word of God, living in the law of God. Lawless people are coming to attack me and they live far from your instruction. They will try to come and tell you what the Bible says. God, I love your word, but they live far. Come on from his instruction. God, I love your word. Come on. They, they know what a scripture says, my God, but they don't know the spirit of God. Hey. Mm, mm, mm. My God, they live far. I don't, I don't have time to defend myself. If you want to know about women pastors, I got a teaching on my YouTube channel called Leave the Women Alone. Feel free to check it out. I don't have time in this season. If you want to be a part, come be a part. I'm not going to sit at a table. I'm not going to listen. I'm not even going to tune in. If I don't believe that it's right, I'm not going to tune in. See, we're, 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 we're in this season where people are trying to force on you what's not God. The house of God should be a house of prayer, not a fashion show. And then if you have a question, feel free to inbox me if you really want to talk about it. Cause, cause, because the thing about it is that's not what we're talking about right now. So if you want to talk about it, I'm open to it. We can have, I can, we can have a phone call. Listen to the message. If you want to talk, get back with me. We'll talk about it. If you really want understanding, but we're being forced to accept what is not God. <sighs> God, I love your word on today. Even when it comes down to some people don't even believe in prophets anymore. They don't believe in apostles anymore. They don't believe in the Holy Spirit, but this Bible talks about it. So we're being forced to believe a lie. And it's just not settling well with me no more. 
Because to live in truth, people are offended by the truth. They're offended when you tell the truth because we're so used to lying. We're so used to sugarcoating. We're so used to, uh, we're so used to, to, to just masking. God, I love your word on today. Hey. People that don't even live the Bible want to come and tell you about the Bible. Yeah, it's crazy. It's very crazy. And I'm talking if they can quote it, but I'm talking about living it. I'm talking about have being pressed out, living the word of God. I've lived this thing and I am not tooting my own horn. I'm not tooting my own horn. I, I Someone said it sounds like I, I got offended. I have got offended the same way David got offended when, when they let Goliath talk about his God. I, I'm offended. You're very true. I am very offended. I'm very offended um, because, because people are calling God a lie. Hmm. They're calling God a lie and telling you these different things. Things. I had someone to come to me and tell me that they, they were told they can't get baptized in their church because they don't, they're not holy enough yet. See, that's a lie. Come on. That's not even Bible. So yes, I'm offended. I'm offended. I, I said, I'm not going to live a lie no more. I'm not going to say I'm good and I'm not good. I'm not good. God is good. And I'm going to follow his regulations. I'm going to follow his decrees. I'm going to follow his spirit. But there were days when Jesus did not like it. Come on. God, I love your word. He said, if it's any other way that you can take this bitter cup, but nevertheless, <laughs> come on. Listen. <laughs> Verse 151, but you are near, O Lord, and all of your commands are true. If God said it is true, we have so many people that are forcing all of these things. We have so much religion. We got these 5013 C's in the church. What does that mean? What does that boil down to? The church has, has is, is teaming up with the government so you don't have to pay taxes. But that actually goes against the Bible because Jesus said, give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and give unto God what is God's. So now you're forcing me. Come on, you're still forcing me to take a lie. It goes against God. But no one is challenging these things because we want the tax write off. Jesus said to pay your taxes. So we're, 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 we're going. So then... We're passing these traditions down, We're passing them down. We're passing these traditions down and, and no one is studying to show thyself approved. Thank you, Lord. No one is studying to show thyself approved. The Bible says narrow is the way to the kingdom of God and broad is the way to destruction. And so there's going to be areas you're going to have to be uncomfortable. You, It's good to have that tax write-off for paying your tithes. I get it. I get it. But if it goes against God, where do we draw the line? It's so many people that are being told, my God, come on, that they got to do all these protocols. They got to wear all of these, these garments and the dresses and the things on top. And I don't even know what all of that crap is called. They have the appearance of godliness. We have prophets out here that are quick to give you a word, but don't live the word. <laughs> They'll tell you what God said, but they don't listen to what God said they self. My God, come on. God, I love your word. Thank you, Lord. We got the gluttonous pastor getting on the homosexual. You're overweight, so you're still in lust. No judgment. Yes, it is judgment. Because the Bible says that a prophet's words are of judgment determining. So I, I'm, I just got to be honest. Determining. Y yes, there's a texture to God. There's a texture to God's people. And that does not mean that you don't have an area that you got to work on, but we're supposed to be continually working on this thing. Come on. You should always have something that you are working on. Hey. My God. Come on. There, there, there has to be something. So then let's go on over. 
Mm. We're still in 119. Let's go to verse 124. I am your servant. Deal with me. Deal with me, Lord. Mm. I am your servant. Deal with me in unfailing love and teach me your decrees. Give me discernment. Give discernment to me, your servant. Then I will understand your laws. This has to be our heart's posture. If he said, come from among them, if he said, separate, if he said, be ye holy, come on. He said, how can two walk together unless they agree? He said, I come to bring the sword. I come to separate families. Come on. See, you're, you're trying to make me stay in a place. I'm not loved properly. I'm not doing it no more. I don't care if it's a church. I don't care if it's a family. I don't care if it's a marriage. I don't care if it's a friendship. I don't care if it was my twin sister and we shared the same womb. I, I've had to learn. First, I learned the pattern of my life after the Bible. Now, in this season, I'm watch. I, I'm, I'm now dissecting how Jesus lived. And yes, he ministered to everybody and I will minister to everybody. But he didn't walk with those that did opposite of what he was doing. He only had one Judas. I've had my Judas. I'm, I'm, I'm filled. I'm full. I'm full on my Judas. I've had that. Come on. He only had one Judas. God, I love your word. Because you got to have Judas. Judas is necessary. But you don't have to keep having Judas. You don't got to keep having Judas. I've never read that. See, Jesus, when he came to people, there was an encounter. There was an opportunity for life change. And when you truly have had a life change, the Lord creates you to be a vessel to enter into people's life for an opportunity of change. But Jesus didn't keep going back, revisiting people. He didn't keep going back to the woman with the way, well, okay, she got blood again. Let me, let me rescue her again. He didn't keep going back to the woman that was caught in adultery. He told her, go and sin no more. See, they're teaching you that you got to stay until the love of God is sucked out of you. Hmm. I love God and all of his children. I love God and all of his children. Verse 126. Lord, it is time for you to act for these evil people have violated your instruction. I said, David, are you in my mind or what? Because I knew I wasn't crazy. Truly, I love your commandments more than gold and even the finest gold. Each of your commandments is right. That is why I hate every false way. Come on. Listen. I said, God, I'm trying. I was trying. I, I mean, it was starting to something is happening. I, I do. I hate every false way. I hate these. Un I don't believe in lying. I don't believe in sugarcoating. I don't believe in, 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 in I don't because I don't live like that. I don't want to lie at your funeral and say you was a good daddy and you wasn't. I don't want to lie at your funeral and say you was a good husband and you wasn't. Come on, just live this thing. The Bible says treat people like you want to be treated. We're being offered a lie and I just, I can't settle with it no more. There's no peace in my soul about it anymore. Family, blood connection no longer makes us blood. It's the blood of Jesus that makes us blood. Spiritual connection. Heart to heart and breast to breast. It's something that connects us. It's like I know my kind. And, and I don't have to force my kind to love me. Come on, I'm trying to, I'm trying to just, we're dissecting. Because I know I just ain't the only person that has this in my mind. Jesus had to be about his father's business.
And Jesus even told his disciples when one of them came to him and they said, they said, Jesus, they said, somebody's casting out devils in your name. He said, if they're not against us, they're for us. You know why he said that? Because they're doing the same thing that we're doing. Come on. See, we're, we're walking the same way. God, I love your word. Come on. Uh, 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 he said, we're, we're walking. They will be known by our love, not our scriptures. And yes, you have wolves in sheep clothing. But it's only so long before that wool get too hot. <laughs> Come on, and that pretenderness, that pretending spirit got to shed. Come on. Because when you really are who you are, it's gonna show up. I'm, I'm just a woman of God. I'm sorry. I, I can't do anything about it. It's in me. So even if I'm at the grocery store and we're trying to figure which cookies that they are, my God. Come on, I'm probably gonna say something about God. And I can no longer apologize for I got to be who God created me to be. Hey. Thank you. That's good. Watch the fruit, not the gift. That's so true. Because there's plenty of people that are gifted going right to hell. He said, many will come, on, come to me on the day of judgment. And they'll say, I prophesied in your name. And I cast out devils in your name. He said, but I'll say to them, turn away from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. I remember going to a church. And one of the older ladies of the church, one of the elder ladies of the church, she was very rude and nasty and harsh with me. And she was, we were at a church picnic and she was just making fun of, she said, oh, you know, here comes, uh, she didn't know, I mean, let me not say that. She didn't say here comes holier than thou, but her attitude was here comes holier than thou. Um, and so it was just a lot. And she just kept saying little things. And um, she just, then she went into how Jesus, how Jesus turned water to wine. I said, yes, but he also said, my time has not come. He said, my time has not come yet. The Bible says it's not it's not for kings to guzzle wine. Kings represent leaders. So, yes, the Bible does talk about how um, uh, deacons, I think it's in like Timothy or Peter. It talks about how deacons shouldn't be shouldn't be overly drunk or something to that effect. But they're not the leader of the church. Uh, it says it's not for kings. It's not for leaders to guzzle wine. Wine is for those bitter and distressed. If you got the Holy Ghost, you shouldn't be bitter and distressed. Come on. See, we don't want the whole word. We want some of the word. I'm not comfortable with some of the word because if I was going to do some of the word, I would just stay in the streets. I'm an all or nothing person. So when I was in sin, I was all the way in sin. Come on. So now that I'm in God, I'm all the way in God. And there are some manifestations. There are some blessings that are attached to it. If not, it makes God a lie. He said, anyone that gives up houses and cars and brother and mother and wife and, and, and things. He said, anyone who gives up these things. So that means you're going to have to give up some things and some people, some places. Either, see, but, but someone else say, but well, now, but not your family. You got to be the, no, there comes a season. Yeah. See, we're making, we're, we keep putting a butt on the word of God. Either it's true or it's not. He said, anyone who gives these, who gives up these people, these places, these things, why we have to give them up, God? Because they're not living holy. Because they are unraveling the God in me. Because they're, they're, they're now tempting me. That's why, that is why the Lord told Samson not to, uh, Solomon, not to marry those women from other, from other tribes and things. Because, not because they didn't have pretty hair, not because they wasn't beautiful, but because he knew that it would pervert him. He knew that it would taint them. My God. I never was, I didn't believe in smoking weed, y'all. I didn't smoke weed in high school. I wasn't tempted. I didn't try it in high school. It wasn't until I got into a marriage. This is so important. My first marriage, I learned so many wicked, underhanded tactics. How to steal without stealing. How to cheat without cheating. Come on. I still, I learned so many. I, I tried weed. I got into homosexuality. I got into porn. All of these things. Come on. Because it was who I was connected to did those things. That's why you got to be mindful. 
Hmm. You got to be mindful who you connect yourself with. I was, uh, we went on vacation a little while ago and my little nephew was in the car with me. And it's so funny because you just, he's so impressionable. He's such a little sponge. You can see what environment he's been in. So when he come back from his daddy's house, he come back ignorant. He come back with all this slang, just all this dumb stuff. Cause that's what he's been in. God, I love your word. That's good. Be careful who you give your hand to. You ain't, you talking right. Um, but then we went on the trip and my spiritual son was with him the whole weekend. And you he just, child, he was so full of the Holy Ghost because my spiritual son wasn't doing nothing. My spiritual, yes, yes, very true. Very trying to absorb masculine energy. Very true. But my spiritual son, he don't do nothing but bless God. It's just shoot, listen, they, he, he, he blesses God. And so my little nephew was under him for a couple of days. Next thing I know, honey, he's asking people, do you know Jesus loves you? He's asking, can we read the Bible? He's running around the house singing praise and worship songs. So it matters. Who you, who you spend time with, who are in your close quarters. I just keep thinking about that. Jesus had the 70 disciples. Then he had the 12, but then he only took three up with him. He only took three up with him. I cannot compromise, and I don't want you to compromise. We're compromising. That is why it is so important who you marry because you're you're going to absorb and get into the things they're into. And, and or if not, there's going to come a place where it's going to be a lot of strain. You want to listen to cussing music and they want to listen to gospel music. They want to smoke. You don't want to smoke. Come on. You want to wear long dresses. They want you to wear mini dresses. Come on. You want to do they want to do porn in the bedroom. You don't believe in it. Come on. See, it's going to come a place where we collide. It's going to come a place in our friendships where we collide. Come on. And it starts to make you compromise. Well, that's my husband. I mean, I guess we can watch a little porn. Come on. It's going to make a place where you compromise. Well, you can smoke in. I don't smoke, but you can smoke in the house. So now you go somewhere and you smell like smoke. <laughs> God, I love your word on today. Come on. See, we're compromising because we don't we don't we don't understand that we, because we've been so we've been so um uh brainwashed. We've been so brainwashed. Hmm. You can catch the rest of this on my YouTube channel. It's on, it'll, it's on, uh, my YouTube channel is called Makeover Ministry. You can catch the rest of it on there later. But we've been so brainwashed. Stand by your man. Stick by your family. Come on. It's some of you mothers out there. Your sons is in jail. They got five and six baby mamas. You paying their child support. You watching their kids. You, you watching this kid. You arguing with this baby mama. You arguing. I, that's not my test. I'm not doing it. Cause see, you sign yourself up. Hey. God, I love your word. Somebody said Christianity is the brainwash. Thank you. That's actually true. You got to be brainwashed. You got to be washed in the blood. Your mind got to be renewed. You're right. You are very right. Because if not, you're going to hell. So you're right. But I, that's not our testimony. But we've been taught this toxic foolishness so long. We've been taught this toxic foolishness so long. That you got to help these kids and help all these people. You got to help this and help. And ministry begins at home and all of those things. Yeah, but but abuse, but but abuse and ministry are two different things. Because ministry means I see results. Let's help somebody on today. Come on, ministry means I I, I see results. <laughs> True ministry means to expose someone to the gospel of Jesus Christ. There's no one in the Bible that had a true encounter with Jesus Christ and their life was the same. Jesus didn't stay right there on the road to Damascus for 59 years with Saul and Paul. He didn't do it. No, there was one encounter. Come on. He didn't sit at the pool of Bethesda for 35 more years with the man that had been there already 39 years. Come on. He, no, he, there, there, when it is ministry, 
It is an assignment to provoke, to open up a door for change, to, to, to show someone the way, my God, we're not the change, but we are the vessel being used to, to, to lead someone, to introduce someone, to be the example. God, I love your word on today. Uh, to be the example. I love God and all his children. See, we're so, we're so, we cannot take, we cannot take worldly principles and we're fitting it into the church. We're saying nobody's perfect. That's another one. And I remember one time I was getting ready to get married. I was, uh, I was, um, uh, engaged. I was engaged to this guy and we were getting ready to get married. And I went to his house and I was sitting on his lap and I believe, I don't, I don't believe in kissing before marriage, but I was sitting on his lap and the, and the Holy Ghost began to sing, you're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. Well, see, I always sang that to the Lord. I always sang that to the Lord. Um, and so I, I'm, I was like, okay, the Lord's just reminding me that I sang that to him. And as I left there, I talked to my spiritual daughter. I got off his lap because I, I just, I knew the Holy Ghost was speaking. That's what I did know. And so I left and I went to my, I talked to my spiritual daughter because me and her really, we talked about everything. And so I told her what had happened. And she said, yeah, she said, the Lord is just, she said, that was the Holy Ghost reminding you that God calls you perfect in all of your ways. Don't mess up. And, and, and in my mind, I was like, no, don't say that because I had because I have been so conditioned, but I live this thing. When God calls me to, to turn left, I turn left. When he calls me to turn right, I turn right. My God, come on. And, but I had got in my I was like, no, you don't got to say all of that. But that's what the Holy Ghost was saying. I do call you perfect. Can I find it in the Bible? Yes. Job was called perfect. But. We've been so pushed into believing a lie. So much protocol, so much doctrine, so many traditions of men. I'm just. See, I have to believe because I literally. I have I have wrapped my life up in this. Um, but I also have to believe because I know God did it for me and see, this is how God broke me out of homosexuality. When, when the Lord called me out, my YouTube channel is called makeover ministry, same as my TikTok. Um, M A K E O V A makeover ministry. Um, when the Lord broke me out of homosexuality, I was like, God, I never seen no good men. I never seen one who was faithful to his wife. I never seen one who loved God for real. I never seen one who preached the same thing they lived. And the way the Holy Ghost broke it down to me was this. Do you think you're the only one who is obedient to God? Do you think that you're the only one who can live holy? Do you think that God would create you to be a loving, caring, supportive, kind, gentle, obedient, submissive wife? But not create a man, come on, uh, 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 to be a partner to that. Do you think that? If not, if you think that way, it's pride. Come on. So see, I can't take my mind in that direction thinking that I am the only one. God, I love your word. So I have to believe, my God, come on, that is somebody. Though the pickings are slim, it reminds me of Abraham. When the Lord began to talk to him about Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham, if you find me 50 righteous men, I won't burn it down. Can't find you 50. Okay. If you find me 20 righteous men, I won't burn it down. Well, I, I can't find you. Oh, Lord, I can't find you. I cannot find you. 20. I can't find you 10. My God. Abraham, if you find me one, mm, mm, mm. 
God, I love your word. If you find me one righteous man, I won't burn it down. See, it's, 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 it's like a search. God, I'm seeking the promises, but Abraham was counted righteous. Come on. But that whole town had to be burned down. Come on. There are whole towns and cities. There are some places the Bible say they'll try to tell you, oh, you ain't holy. If you couldn't, you didn't break no chains in that. You didn't know nobody wasn't set free. Nobody wasn't delivered. There were places Jesus couldn't do miracles. Come on. See, we're, we're big. It's just not adding up. He said, knock the dust from your feet. If you are being sent to someone to give a word and they don't receive it, the Bible says knock the dust from your feet and leave them to their fate. That goes for your family, your friends, your co-workers, ministry, a person on the street. It goes for anybody. But, but we're not being taught this. We're being taught the opposite. And a lot of these things are abusive and it's, and it's draining people. Yeah. It's draining people. They've stayed in dry ministries too long. I'm not talking about if the Lord tells you to stay because he'll tell you when to go. My God. But I'm talking about those who the grace of God has lifted. God has sent word for you to divorce that person. He has sent word. He has sent instruction. But we're but you're so wrapped up the religious mindset. I know I've been there, but I'm free now. Uh, I've been there. God, I love your word. Hmm. And that's true. Some some demons won't leave uh, until we fast and pray. That's true. But even in fasting and praying, there were some places Jesus was the fastest praying is full of spirit is man. And, and, and it still were some places he couldn't do miracles. So I need us to get that. I'm not saying God is able to do anything, but there will be some places because sometimes you, you feel like, well, you're staying so long because you pro you believe what God said. And I believe it. I have walked through some seasons with people and I believe it. But guess what? They did not take the exit. And so because they didn't take the exit, you're still in a season where God has moved on. And now you no longer have the grace for it. Now it's starting to bother you. You're going into depression. You're going into suicidal thoughts. My God, come on, because you're staying in something that the hand of God has lifted off of. Jesus couldn't do miracles in his own hometown. So who are you? Who am I? Come on. See, th th that's why he talked. The word is so important. A Bible is Christian will always live a defeated life. You got to actually get in here and study this scroll. And that's true. The spirit of unbelief. Yep. So true. That was it. They didn't believe that God could do it. They didn't believe that Jesus was saved. They didn't even believe the prophets that were sent. They killed them. Hmm. God, I love your word. We're just in, we're in a season of truth and you cannot be free until you are honest. And our, one of my spiritual mothers that has passed on, she just blessed my soul. Boy, she always told the truth and I always admired that about her. And I said, well, I guess I'm here. I guess I'm here. You want to come to dinner? Not today. That's not being nasty. See, we've been taught. We're even forcing children. We're even forcing children. Oh, go give Johnny a hug. You don't want, they don't want to give Johnny a hug. I'm not telling you to teach your children to be nasty, but I'm telling you, you have to let people have real emotions, feelings, and process through those things. Whew. Someone said, do I still believe in second marriage while your first spouse is living? Yes, because all divorce is not um, all divorce. All uh, uh, Let me see. Let me get the word together. Oh, the Bible says in a case of adultery, that, that marriage is um, allowed. Jesus said it. The Bible says Moses permitted divorce because their hearts were hard. That means their heart couldn't be pricked. So when the Lord told them to do right by your wife, do right by your husband, their heart couldn't be pricked. So that's why Moses had to allow divorce. And the Lord said, Jesus said that, yes, he allowed it when it came to the, the, the aspect of adultery. And all adultery is not sex. 
come on all adultery is not sex uh some adultery is spiritual adultery jesus when he divorced the people of israel in jeremiah 3 you can go back and read it if you like jeremiah 3 1 um Verse one through 18, he talks about how he divorced his, the children of Israel because they were unfaithful and they, they loved other gods. They worshiped other gods. So don't worry. We'll be talking about it whenever the time is right. Um, but we, 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 this is what I'm saying. Even when it comes to divorce, we're making people stay in marriages. Um, we're making people stay in marriages that are broken. The man's cheating and you up, you getting STDs. You got to take her of five and six babies. I'm just not accepting it. Because it does, it's not loving like Christ loved the church. What is, you want to know about what is adultery considered? Go to Malachi 2 and 15. The Lord talks about divorce um, and what divorce actually is. And I just told you Jeremiah 3. You can go to that too. That, that, that talks about divorce and adultery and prostitution. The Lord calls it spiritual prostitution. Um, see, we can't take one scripture and build a whole doctrine over it. We can't take one scripture and build a whole doctrine over it. We have to actually study. That's why the word of God says study to show yourself approved. And this is the thing that I'm at peace with in my soul. I promise you I am. And I want you to be at peace with it in your soul. If you study for yourself, even if y'all come up with a different resolution and understanding, as long as you feel in your heart, you feel in your heart, you feel in your soul, you feel in your mind, you feel in your body and in your strength that the Holy Ghost has agreed with you. You're the only one that has to give an account on judgment day. So when people want to go back and forth about a woman being called to preach an apostle and a pastor and all that, I don't got to go back and forth because I know what God said and I got to give an account to God. So it's okay if my pastoring and my apostleship and my preaching makes you uncomfortable as long as it still pleases God. Okay. They told Jesus that he couldn't heal on the Sabbath day. And he was the resurrection. He is the Sabbath. So, you know, this is the thing. These traditions of men, but we're passing down. We're not studying to show ourselves approved. We're not getting in the word for ourselves. We're not understanding the word ourselves. And so we're, we're wrapped in so much bondage. We're wrapped in abusive relationships. We have pastors who tell you you cannot correct them. Yes, if you're telling me something and it don't go by this word, I can bring it to you. Now, you don't have to stand up in front of the whole church, but you can go to one. The Bible says if you got out with your brother, go to your brother. You see what I'm saying? We don't even go to each other. We want to talk around each other because we're cowards. You'll go talk about me to somebody else. Call me. Come on, listen, we, 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 we're, we're so, we, we, we've gotten so far from the truth. It's crazy, boy. It's just crazy. But the place I find understanding, the place I find hope, the place I find refuge is in the word. And if I can find it in the word, then I can find peace in it. Even if I don't like it, even if I don't want to do it, even if it doesn't make sense to me, as long as I can find it in the word, I can walk it out. Malachi 2 and 15. Well, actually, you can even go back because this begins, actually, Malachi 2 talks about how your a husband's wife, you know, a husband, how you, you we, husbands have married these pagan wives and they didn't do right and and it hinders the prayer life cuz you didn't you didn't do right by your wife and you're praying and you're crying and all of these things um but God is not hearing it cuz you haven't treated your wife right come on see and a lot of responsibility is on the husband cuz the husband is the head but they, many many husbands are not the head of their house but they want to be the head they want to be the head in the earthly realm but not in the spiritual realm and so, the, see, these things, it's just false truths, and they're trying to make us accept it. But it's not true, and it, it goes against God. So either we're going to have to eat the whole scroll, believe the whole scroll, live out the whole scroll, or not. Hmm. Either way, we got to go with this thing. God, I love your word. And see, when you really desire to know um, you really desire to know a thing. You seek it out in the Lord. That's all you got to do is seek it out in the Lord. 
So all you got to do is seek it out. If you really desire to know, he will definitely let you know. He's going to make sure you get what you need when you when your heart is pure. When you're not seeking it out to be malice, when you're not seeking it out to get, oh, I'm going to tell them, but I'm seeking it out so I can live right. That's the purpose of seeking out things of God. If you, if he said, if you desire to know a thing, ask it of God. And as I, as I've been asking and I've been seeking the Lord about marriage, I walked into a church yesterday and the man of God, he just was, he was just honoring his wife without her telling him to do it. He was just honoring his wife. He was just, he was just saying how, how blessed that he was to have her and how he loves being married to her and all these things. See, th- when it's in your heart, nobody got to tell you how to do it. This is what I'm saying. It just doesn't make no, and so it just, it helped me to see that I'm not wrong it helped me to see that it's truly and there might be few far and in between but there really are some true men of God the real ones I know we call people men of God but if you don't treat your wife right you ain't no man of God because you ain't even leading your, your own that's your first church is your wife you ain't even leading her right come on if you're not if you're not treating your children right come on you're not you're not a man of God because you're not come on see we're, we we gotta understand we're calling people these things and then we got leadership who are cowards and punks and they won't sit you down and say, you're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. My God, come on. I was counseling with a couple the other day and it reminded me of when I was married in my first marriage with my children's father. I went to a pastor and he was a punk. He sat down with me and my children's father and he said we were married and he waited till till he till my children's father went out of the room. And he going to say, you need to run because he ain't no good. Why wouldn't you say it in front of him? God, I love your word. It birthed something in me. It birthed something in me. God, I love your word. Because see, now it allows both people to be accountable. So I'm not going to sit down in front of you. And then I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I'm not, I'm not, don't ask me to do your wedding because I'm not doing no weddings. If the Lord say no, and I see it, I'm going to say what I see. And it's up to you, my God. But I'm not going to be a part of, because marriage is so sacred and it has been treated so loosely. It has been treated so any kind of thing. Wait a minute, marriage mirrors how Christ loved the church. That is the holiest thing in the world. What do you mean? You can treat your wife any kind of way and you a man of God. It's a lie. It's a lie. You don't even got the Holy Ghost. You can't because you cannot treat your wife any kind of way in the spirit of God. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. It lives in you. And you can treat her any kind of way no, that because he he died for his bride. That means anything that was uncomfortable in his way, anything that made her uncomfortable, anything that made her feel insecure, any way that she needed to be protected, honored, loved, cherished. My God, come on. He did whatever he had to do to cover his bride. And so we have to eat the whole scroll. I love marriage counseling. I think it's amazing because I truly believe that that marriage can be holy. And some people have just, you just haven't been taught this. And that's okay. That's okay. So I'm not saying throw your marriage away because it's jacked up right now. But let's get help. You have to be willing to get help. If you're willing to get help, yes, it definitely works both ways. But the first command goes to the husband. Because there's so much weight on when the man lines up. There's so I, I really haven't seen too many relationships when the man is fully in God that the wife don't line up. I just haven't really seen it. I didn't say it don't exist. I mean, when a man is fully in God, he's fasting, he's praying, he's covering, he loves his wife, he's tender, he's merciful, he's kind to her. Uh, he, he's, he's interceding on her behalf. Ah. Believe that there's something that a woman has to respond. We're naturally created to respond to it. We're naturally created to submit in our spirit. Whatever you give her, she's going to give it back to you tenfold. Because we, we, we take a seed and we produce a baby. So when you give her a little bit of hell, you give her a little fire, she's going to give you a whole lot of hell. Come on. So it's okay to say I'm jacked up. Teach me how to love my wife. Teach me how to submit to my husband as unto the Lord. Teach me how to raise my children. See, this is what I'm talking about. I don't want us to keep saying I'm blessed and everything is good. No, I'm jacked up, but I'm counting on God to help me. And it takes your participation. 
I do believe that God gives people love as a motivation. Because if some people, they don't know God, but they love one another. And if you're willing to say, I'm not willing to be treated this way. And if you love me, we'll take the steps to make the changes. Come on. We'll take the steps to make the changes. Love covers a multitude of sin. That's why the Lord sent his son to die. But love doesn't cover up and sweep things under the rug. Okay. We were all once jacked up. We're not always all jacked up. Come on. Because there has to come up. If if we were always all jacked up, then nobody's getting to heaven. He said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. We come to him jacked up. We all have sinned. We all have and fallen short of the glory of God. But whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's not just a one time. See, they've even taught us, oh, you just pray the sinner's prayer and you good. No, I need to be saved daily from myself, daily from my heart, daily from the wounds of other people, daily from my thoughts. I need to be saved moment by moment. Help me if you keep helping me, God. I'm going to get through. That is what perfection looks like. Perfection does not mean you never have messed up or never had a bad thought. Perfection means you've matured enough to call on God before you do the thing. Help me so I don't smoke. Help me so I don't cuss that person out. Help me so I don't cheat. Help me so I don't masturbate. But if in those instances that I do, God, I love your word. Um, I know how to repent And true repentance is not just saying, I'm sorry. True repentance, God, I love your word. It's turning from your wicked ways. A person with a truly repented heart, they don't have to tell you they repented. You'll see it in their lifestyle. I had a couple that I was counseling. The husband was cheating on the wife and. He's the, 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 the mistress started, started working at the job with him. And the wife was like, this just is not good. And I said, yeah, he needs to cut all ties. Why would you, she's working at your job. Well, I've been at this job 19 years. So you invited this woman into our relationship. So to secure the bride after adultery, you cannot have loose ends tied. You know, if you really want your marriage, You got to do whatever it takes. If you got to go work two Walmart jobs and a job at uh, Frank's Pizza. Come on. See, you cannot say, I want my marriage, but I want to be comfortable. No, you cannot jack up a whole marriage, a whole relationship and not do what it takes to secure the relationship. If a wife has cheated on her husband, you can't keep being friends with his sister. Come on, you, you've broken the vow and the covenant. So whatever you got to do to secure your husband's heart, you have to do that. God can do all things, but it takes your participation. It takes your participation. So my best advice to you is to live the word of God. Love like God loved. Come on. But don't be mistreated for no reason. Jesus already went up on the cross. He was already beat. He was already bruised. See, many of us, we don't go forward in God because we fully become dependent on people and not dependent on God. Angela, I want you to turn them chocolate chip cookies into a business. Okay. Because them chocolate chip cookies is blessed. I want you to turn them into a business. I want you to ship me a box. Just ship me a box with one cookie. Don't ship all of them because the Lord is kind. I don't need the temptation. But I want you to turn that into a business. You got to give God something to blow on. We all have something that we can do. But many of us are so trapped and bound by the religious system of submission even. Oh, you know, submit to your husband. I believe in it. I promise you, I, I can't wait to, I couldn't wait to get married so I could get in the passenger seat. I'm tired of driving the car, but 
you got to give me something to submit to that's holy because I can't let you drive me to hell. Come on. See, we, we, we're, we're, oh, you got to submit. You got to just take anything. I told, I told somebody today, I said, I don't believe anymore. And you just fast and pray till your husband stop cheating on you. St- fast and pray till he stop beating you. Fast and pray till he stop cussing out you and your kids and beating your dog. I don't believe in it no more. And I said, God, if I'm wrong, convict my heart. But I, he hasn't convicted my heart because why do I have to fast and pray for something that you signed up for? This is a me and my husband were talking about this today. This is a together. You said, will you marry me? And I said, I do. So if we both came together consenting, I'm not fasting and praying for you to stay faithful. I'll fast and pray for you to for sickness to be broke. I'll fast and pray for your mama to get healed. I'll fast and pray uh, for your job. I'll fast and pray for your health, for our finance. I'll fast and pray for all, but I'm not fasting and praying for someone who asked to be committed to me to commit to me because because jesus did not have to fast and pray for the disciples to be committed to them they wanted to be there come on and they was jacked up sometimes peter was peter peter done cut out jesus he just corrected them Come on. But even in his jacked up nature, it was to protect his it was to protect his leader. Come on. He didn't go against God to do that. My God. Come on. And even when Peter denied Jesus, he denied him, but his heart was still attached. But he was just so overwhelmed by the circumstances. Peter was like, my God, if I have seen my leader, I've seen my master do so many things. And if they're doing that to him, I don't have a fair shot. So I don't know him. It tore Peter's heart to say he didn't know Jesus. But see, there was a difference between Judas and G- and, and Peter when it came to Jesus. My God, because Peter came back. <laughs> because Peter's heart was still pure about that thing. He just was overtaken by the circumstances of the situation. Judas's heart was had become corrupted. And see, this is how the enemy works. God, I love your word. See, the enemy will get you in that thing. He he got Judas in that thing. My God. But when the hand of the enemy lifts, my God, you're left all by yourself. You're left with guilt. You're left with condemnation. You're left with shame. My God. And because you turned your back on God, my Lord, come on. You have nowhere to run. So that's why Judas hung himself. Come on. We have to understand this, that you should not have to beg people to walk with you. I just, that's where I'm at. Yeah. The heart posture is so true. It's where I'm at. See, it doesn't mean people won't get it wrong sometimes. I say to, I say this all the time as a leader, as a spiritual mother. That don't mean I, I might miss your birthday. I might, uh, I might text you without saying good morning. Uh, but that, but my heart, check my heart posture. Check my heart's posture about that thing. Try the spirit. See, I've tried some spirits. That's why. That's what brought me to all of this. Because I've been trying some spirits. Someone told me I was judgmental. And I said, good. I'm glad. That's good. That lets me know that I'm in the right vein. Because the word of the Lord talks to, to Jeremiah. He told Jeremiah, I've made your words of judgment. Because you are a, uh, you are a, um, oh, I wish I could think of the word, um, detector of people it's a different word uh but he said you are a detector of people so yes your words are supposed to be of judgment you're supposed to judge between good and evil when i'm trying the spirit i'm just telling you what came back i know you said you're a child of god but every time we get cut off in traffic you cut you cussing somebody out i've tried the spirit see problems reveal the nature of a person reveals the net your problems what do you do when problems come this is why the lord allow problems when you're meeting new people he'll allow problems he'll allow situations because you need to see how they handle it do they handle it godly or do they handle it like the devil discerner of spirits thank you yes uh he he, he told jeremiah i've made you a discerner of spirits i've made come on i made you got to know what's right and what's wrong come on you if not we'll be deceived And he said, in the last days, even the most elect. That's why we're here. Because I said, God, they trying to trick me into saying this is God. Some of these fellowships are cults. 
Some of these fellowships are cults. I see these ceremonies that they're doing. They got on so many hats and bows and bowls and balls and robes and things. And it's just so it's a cult. What did Jesus wear? He didn't have all that on. My God, come on. Some of it. We're more worried about the outer garb. We're in fellowship with demons. My God, come on. We got churches. I'm not get. I just can't. I can't do it. I love you. I can love you. I can, I can talk to you. I can come preach. If the Lord tells me to, if you give me a word for your house, my God, come on. But see, I'm not in fellowship with a lot of people because eh, that ain't what God taught me. And I can't come in and agree. No matter what, I can't come and agree. Let's talk about, even when we get down to this vaccine, the Lord didn't tell me to take it. He didn't tell me to take the vaccine. So I'm not taking the vaccine. So it just is what it is. Um, and so what I believe is that no matter where God sends me, if he wants me to go, whether it's in North America, Africa, Zimbabwe, wherever it is, he's going to make a way if he want me to go. See, but we're compromising. Because we're afraid. Well, how am I going to do my God assignment if I don't take the vaccine? How, how are you going to say you, your God, if it's your God assignment, God... Let me say it again. If it's your God assignment, God is going to make a way. I'm just trying to talk to somebody about, about th th these things that we're being forced to accept. Do I still love you if you got the vaccine? Go ahead. I love you. I still love you. I'm talking about for me in my house, this house right here. I'm talking about for me in my house. I still love you. I don't, that doesn't have anything to do with love. If you felt like in your heart, cause you got to stand for you. So if you got to stand and you feel in your heart that God told you to take that vaccine, then you stand on that. I'm just telling you for me and myself. See, I, I want us to understand what the spirit of the Lord is truly saying, because in the last days, even the most elect would be fooled if it were possible that if. So that means he's going to start making it uncomfortable to you. Don't ignore when it's not. I don't know. It don't make sense. I know, I know what they say it, but. I know what they saying, but it don't line up. Come on, because they're trying to deceive us. Study to show thyself. I told my spiritual daughter, I said, listen, if I tell you something and you can't find it in this Bible and it don't agree with your spirit, you don't listen to me. Come on, because I only want you to follow me as I follow Christ. Come on. If I ain't following Christ no more, don't follow me. If you see in my actions that I'm not following, because some people still showing up at church. They're not following Christ in their actions. You're rude. You don't have the Holy Ghost and you're nasty. I just can't accept that no more of saying that you truly have the love of God. I was talking about the church that I went to and the older lady, she was rude and she was nasty and she was just so telling me that I was holier than thou and all of these things. You don't have the Holy Ghost. You're older than me, but you don't live holy. So you're offended. I ain't even said nothing to you. A tree is known by the fruit that it bears. An apple tree has never called me and said, hey, apostle, I just want you to know that I'm an apple tree. No, I look on the tree and it's apples. But then you do have that fruit that's spoiled and you can't tell until you bite into it. See, some people say, you know, well, the Bible says don't don't be unequally yoked. Sometimes you don't know that you are unequally yoked until you go a couple of rounds with somebody. Come on, because I don't know we unequally yoked because we both sit in the church together and we both lift our hands when the pastor say lift your hands. But when we go out to dinner and you order a martini and I order orange juice. I see we're unequally yoked on some things. When we go shopping together, God, I love your word. My God, and you buy some Daisy Dukes and I buy the shorts down to the knees. All righty. I see that we are not, we are not made of the same. We're not. See, 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 I love uh, when Adam said she's bone of my bone and she is flesh of my flesh. She's, she's structured like me. Some people are structured like you, but they're not filled <laughs> with what you're filled with. My God, come on. I was listening to a man of God last week. Bless me. Come on. He said, uh, he said, I've been celibate and single nine years because I'm not going to settle. He said, it's some, it's some women out here. And what he was saying is I see some who are bone of my bone, but they ain't flesh of my flesh. 
<laughs> they're not filled with what I'm filled with. I don't cuss and they still cuss. I don't drink and they still drink. My God, I don't watch horror movies because that's demonic. Why do I want to sit up and watch a demon movie? But they still watch. They might go to church. See, we're in a season where the, the goats and the sheeps are being separated and people don't like it. And that's okay. I promise you it's okay. Come on. It, it's all right. Because true holiness, sometimes there are seasons, God, I love your word, of, of, of loneliness. And you may only have a couple. Jesus only had three that were faithful to him and committed. He only had three that took him to the mountaintop. But when he was on that cross, he was by himself. <laughs> My God, come on. So I don't have a lot of friends. I don't have a lot of family. God, I love your word. Come on. This is why the family of faith is so important. But even in the family of faith, some are bone of our bone, but they're not flesh of our flesh. I'm not going to sit around and go to the nightclub and drop it like it's hot. So I don't do it. And you're not going to make me feel bad about it. Come on. We have to get to this place where I, there are some things that God has sealed in me. He's sealed. I don't, I don't smoke. So I can't, if, so if you're smoking and that's your outlet, it's only so long I'm going to keep being around that. Come on. I don't cuss. Come on. I was around somebody and they just kept saying cuss words. My God, come on. I done found myself saying a cuss word. See, you're now unraveling the God in me. There are some things that God has sealed people are offended by the way you live my spiritual daughter her and her 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 husband has found her at a very young age they're 17 and 18 and she says she said mama bro sometimes i don't understand all the things he does i said you don't understand it but don't you unravel him you don't understand it come on you will never be an enemy Come on, in his camp. God, I love your word. Come on. You don't have to understand how God moves. When you have a spouse who is being used by God in a way you don't understand, just step back and say, God, I don't understand. But don't you unravel them. My God, come on. I was listening to a woman of God the other day and it blessed me so good. She said, she said, my husband is, uh, she said, he's a real man of God. She said, and I had to learn how to, I used to get irritated and upset and frustrated because he'd be talking to people everywhere he go. He always has something going on. She said, I just had to learn how to have something in my hand to do. Come on. You have to learn how to support someone. If you have someone who really has a high call, it's okay. Come on. You have, you have, uh, uh the prophetess Deborah. Her, the Bible does not say her husband was a preacher, a pastor. Uh, you have, there's another prophet. I think her name was who? Oh, I can't, I can't think of it right now. But the Bible talks of her husband, but he did not, it didn't say he was a pastor, a prophet. My God. But at the same time, they, they, they supported and did not unravel what was working in. Come on. Even when the Bible says an unbelieving spouse shall be won over by the, the believing spouse. My God, come on. You, that means you don't believe in God, but that does not mean you unravel my peace. Because if you keep reading in first uh, Corinthians seven, I believe that's where that's located. Um, it says that, uh, I, that the Lord desires that we live in peace. So we gonna live in peace. Come on. You ain't got to go to church when I go to church if you don't want to, but you gonna let me go. Come on. You don't got to read your Bible. Come on. When it's time. Who Yes, thank you. But see, I want us to understand that there is a way. That's all I'm saying today is there is a way and we're being offered a lie. In this season, run it by the word, run it by the spirit, try the spirit by the spirit to see if it is of God. Try the spirit to see if it's bone of your bone, see if it's flesh of your flesh. My God, come on. And yes, when it comes to church and when it comes to marriage, the Bible says divide your time between God and your husband. Divide your time between between God and your wife. You have to do that. So I'm not saying do only God, because if you only want to do God, you got to stay single. Come on. So, yes, you got to make time for your relationship. And let me say it this way, too, because I'm a workaholic and my husband is, too. You got to make time. You got to take some time from work and look at your bride and look at your husband. Come on, because if you want to only work, you need to stay single. And some people say, I'm working really hard to buy this and this and this. Well, you need to work really hard, stay single. And then when you bought that, then get your husband or get your wife. Because some people, you don't even have time because you're so busy at work. 
You have to have listening ears in marriage. My husband said, baby, when I come home, I don't want you to be on your phone. I said, OK, husband, I got that check. Now what else you got? Come on. See, you got You have to learn how to check it off the list. That does not mean you have that don't mean we don't have problems. But can we check it off the list? Can your actions speak that you heard me? I want us to get this thing right, people of God. I'm so tired. I'm going to keep talking about it probably till I die. I keep saying it. I'm going to keep talking about marriage because it is a sacred relationship of the, it mirrors how Christ loved the church. And so when I have not seen it, I, I have to still go back to God and say, God, where I, I'm still in here with, where are the righteous marriages? So I can't settle. My daughter told me, she said, mama, sometimes. It's the it's embarrassing because you done been divorced several times. I said, well, baby, it's only embarrassing to you. It's not embarrassing to me because I'm not going to be mishandled. and I'm not going to be mistreated because I'm a daughter of the king. My daddy don't play about me. And I don't know no daddy who signed their daughter up to go get beat down, battered, scorned, unraveled, crushed, beat. No, I, I don't know no daddy that signs up. No, that's not what that's not what my heavenly father does. And so if it's not right, I'm not going to stay in it. And I'm not going to advise any of my daughters. Yes, we will counsel through it. We'll counsel. If we can counsel, we'll counsel. But if we cannot counsel, then we have to move on. And, 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 many, and, and it's in the Bible. So let's just get it together. Let's, it's in the Bible. All adultery is not, it's not sex. Spirit, being, being not covered as a wife. Is also being adultery. It's also adultery because the husband is to cover her, to protect her, her emotions, her heart, her feelings, her financial well-being. Come on. We have some men that are not even godly that know how to cover their wife, that are not harsh when they speak to them, that are not rude, that consider their feelings. I was counseling a, a young couple one time and the man, he was very uh, verbally abusive and he cheated on the wife. And I said, question. Would you let somebody come in here and punch your wife in the face? Absolutely not. Right. Well, you're doing it to her. Come on. See, it's, it's a mentality that I can hurt you, but no one else can. That's when you know it's no longer good. Come on. It's no longer good. Many of us are in family relationships like that. They don't want nobody else to mistreat you, but they'll mistreat you. It's not, it's not godly. It's not godly. Oh, the sun is so beautiful right now. Lord, we just thank you for your word on today. Thank you for each person that tuned in. May it, may it hit where it needs to hit. And if it does not apply, let it roll off the bat. Lord, we ask that you be with us. Continue to cover us and keep us and speak to our hearts and our minds and our souls and our spirit, God. For you alone are holy and righteous. You are the King of Kings, and you are the Lord of Lords. It is in you that we live, move, and have our being. There is a texture to your love. There is a texture to your spirit. And we must try the spirit, by the spirit, to see if it's of God, because some of this stuff ain't of God, and they're lying on your name. We thank you that you reveal all things. Do not let us be comfortable or in peace when it is not you, God. Don't let us be comfortable with false teaching. Don't let us be comfortable with false doctrine. Don't let us be comfortable with false love. Don't let us be comfortable, God, with a false word. Let our inner witness, our inner spirit, the Holy Ghost, bear witness to it, God. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Whew. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Definitely praying for you, sis. We definitely praying for you. We are all in this thing together. Some of you have just tuned in or you've been tuned in just for a little bit. You might have missed the beginning of the message. Uh, you may not even know who I am. I'm Apostle Julia. I'm the pastor of Makeover Transformation Church and the founder of the Makeover Ministry. Uh, you can catch our YouTube channel on it's called Makeover Ministry. Uh, you can catch us on any platform at Makeover Ministry. We're on IG, TikTok, Instagram, Google, and YouTube. Um, and I, I love what the Lord is doing in my heart. And I just give it to you. I don't, I ain't scripted. I give it to you how the Lord gives it to me. Um, 
And I, I thank him for your life and I thank him for my life. May the Lord be with you and be with me as we leave this place, but never from his presence. Hallelujah and amen. Blessings and peace, people of God. Have a good evening on purpose.